Abu Shabu. Hi, Abu Shabu. Hi. What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at Fall Guys, our uh, next bean-based uh, game review. Uh, game review is a new series on this channel where I'll be reviewing games that I've been played on the channel before, or new upcoming games that I have played but haven't posted videos on. Um, I have started like a update on my film review, show review, and anime review, where I'm just trying to make them all better, and you're probably sick of me saying this in all these videos, so I'm going to sort of tone it down a little bit and stop. Uh, it'll probably be the last few videos you hear me say it in, but anyway, let's get on to the hit game that was 2020's Fall Guys. It aired around the perfect time when it was all locked inside and we could all play party games together in the form of Fall Guys. Fall Guys is a free-to-play platform battle royale game developed by M Meterotic and published by Epic Games. The game involves up to 40 players who control jelly bean-like characters and compete against each other in a series of randomly selected minigames such as obstacle courses or soccer. As this uh, game started in 2020, uh, start of lockdown, it took off by a storm and was taken out by Among Us because um, we all loved beans in 2020 for whatever reason. And... Um, it was a very cool art style, very simplistic art style. Bean shaped characters with a white visor and some arms and legs. And it quickly took off, being exclusive to PlayStation and PC, I do believe. It really upset Nintendo and Xbox players, so they started working on Xbox and uh, Nintendo sort of versions of their game. And it didn't come out till like another two years, uh, I believe. It came out a long time after Fall Guys had died. Um, but that is what re-brought the hype around Fall Guys. And the Epic Games did buy them out when they were at their lowest because Fall Guys was a very popular game. And it, I think it lasted about three to five months of everyone enjoying it and loving it and playing it, trying to get that crown royale. I wouldn't have really called it a battle royale. I would have called it a party game. Uh, or like a, a game with party games in it, because that's technically what it is. You could play it with your friends where it's just a couple of you guys playing, or you can play it online with everyone in the world. And it is a max lobby of 40 people. So that is so many people. The games are super easy. The graphics are very bright, pretty basic, but colorful and unique. It all seems rubbery, jelly beady, shiny. And obviously with a hit game, you have to add in especially a free game, you have to add in microtransactions. And of course, with microtransactions, you get new skins for your game. And with Epic Games being the new owner of this, their collaborations with Fortnite can now come to this game as well. So we have the likes of Sonic, the likes of Doctor Who, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Halo, Kratos, um, Lara Croft, pretty much anyone you can think of. If they're in Fortnite, they're probably in here as well because they have Alien. There's just so many different crossovers. They also implemented a Battle Pass and it was going quite strong. They're on their like fifth or sixth season now. Uh, I do believe their seasons are quite longer than natural, normal seasons from uh, Fortnite or PUBG or Apex. I believe Fall Guys have a lot longer of a season. But it did start to slow down pretty quickly uh, after 2020 um, and then it got quite boring, no one played it because it was the same sort of 12 levels that you could play through. It got very repetitive, people started going pro and it made people who were just joining uh, really hard to sort of get into it and win and um, that's a problem with games. If you have people who are too sweaty and too sort of good at the game when new people are starting, um, and know where everything is, it does end the game. We have seen it with Fortnite, and we have seen it with Among Us. People started getting too good, getting too familiar with the map, so they had to shake it up a little bit, but the game developers could not keep up with the demand. They could not roll out enough updates in time, and people started to drop off, and they started to lose people, and that's when it got picked up by Epic Games, and they managed to bring it all the way to Season 5, added new content every season, a couple of new skins here and there, and... They eventually opened up their own new theme in Season 5 where you can build your own map. 
and they can now play those community maps in actual games. Like, they get approved by Epic Games, and they'll put them into the actual roster. So now, they don't have to create the maps, we can create the maps, and everyone can play them. And that is a genius idea. It's a massive cop-out, it's a massive cheap-out. Because it means they can save money on making new maps and using the designs for it. And they can just let us do the work for them. It is such a cop-out, but it's such a good idea because it allows the community to have more involvement with the game. Gives them a lot more freedom, a lot more fun. And for people who don't enjoy playing but enjoy creating, like maps like uh, in Super Mario Maker. Uh, I know a lot of people who prefer making the maps than actually playing them. So that can bring a whole new target audience into this game as well so it's a big money move for them to do that but it took them all the way to season five and i know they've been working on it for a while in fortnite with their creative mode and they're revamping that soon there's just it's starting to feel very similar to fortnite with all the stuff that's been included we have the same collaborations we have the same creative sort of type scheme thing and we have its very own battle pass once epic games gets something it is made very repetitive and very similar to their most popular IP, Fortnite. But I did enjoy this game. I did play this game. My character used to be an orange Spartan, uh, and then I swapped it to a sort of pink Spartan, and now I am an orange fox. So if you do see an orange fox in the game, that will probably be me. I did buy the 349 pack, and you will see that in a video later on this week. But... The music is top tier. The music is fucking legendary in this. Like, the, the the little music, it builds suspense, but it's so uplifting as well. It's such, like, a joyous, happy music, and you can vibe to it. The music is great. The skins are really creative. Um, I just wish there was more variety, because you can't have a top, a bottom, a skin pattern, a skin color, and a faceplate color. Um, I do wish there was like a little feet option so you could wear trousers off like shoes because I do want to wear a belt and then I also want to wear shoes but I can't because the belt is the bottom thing like it doesn't come with the shoes and that is a design flaw for me like the character creation the character customization is very limited due to the sections that they do have on there and it can cause a little bit of frustration and you not be able to get the character you want because of the items that are limited. But obviously as time moves on, you'll obviously be able to get more stuff in the game. And I really like that Among Us character. Uh, I think it's quite cool, a nice creative idea. Because um, again, the bean-based game Among Us did come out a very similar time to this and rose in popularity at a very similar time to this. Because we all liked beans. I don't know why it was bean-based characters. It was very simple. It was a very simple time. It was all locked inside. So I, I do give us permission to like beans so much, I guess. You know, being locked inside an apocalyptic type event, just eating canned beans. I do see the resemblance there. But, um, yeah. I think it's a very fun game. I still play it. I'm getting back into it. Especially with a Teenager at Ninja Turtles coming out later. And me doing more videos on it. I am going to try and get back into it. Try and play it more. I did only get my crown win a couple of days ago. Because the game is very easy. Most of the games are very easy. And you can survive till the very end without much struggle. And I like that. I think that's quite cool. Um, or it could just be my skill. And with the lack of skill needed, that can also affect people's enjoyment of playing the game. They want, like, a little bit of a challenge. They don't want some easy that they can win every time. That gets boring. And it ruins the gameplay uh, for everyone else and yourself, especially with hacking. Hacking is very easy in this game. People flying around everywhere. And I think they've fixed that now, but at one point it was just filled with hackers. People flying around, people going under the map, people just teleporting around. So... It got very, like, hard to play at some points. Um, but it, it's definitely got a very simplistic art style, like Among Us. Uh, but that definitely does work into its favour. You don't need, like, a really good designed party game for it to be fun. You just need the gameplay to be good. The controls are quite good as well. Uh, they're pretty easy to do. I do struggle with the sort of, like, holding on to the ledges. Um, and that does sometimes end up in me losing and... Um, dying 
so I wish there was a better way to sort of grapple onto the edges. That could just be me though, um, but I do find it a little hard to do. But that's my only thing that I struggle with really. Like everything else is pretty easy and pretty simple to do. And it's it's just a good simple game. I'm not yeah, I'm not saying it's anything fantastic. It's not like the next best game. It was good for its time, and I'm glad, like the Among Us one, I'm glad I waited a while before looking back at it, before going back to play it, just to see if it's ch how much it's changed, see how much it's developed, and see if it still holds up to everyone's hype of it in 2022, because that's when everyone loved it. And then it just went off hill and everyone called it cringe. And that's what internet has turned into, and I don't like that. As soon as a new game or a new thing becomes popular, it'll get popular, 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 until it's overdone and oversaturated, then everyone will start to just hate it because there's too much of it. But that's the thing with popularity. It, it, it comes and goes, and it comes in waves. And I think um, Fall Guys has managed to hold on to a select few. Like It's still not like a overpopulated game, but a lot of people still do play it, so the servers are still there. There is still a demand for this game. And um, I'm doing news videos on it, doing gameplay videos on it. I'm trying to get back into it because I do, do think it's a good game. But uh, I am going to give it a good six. Like what I gave Among Us, a good middle game. Because, again, it does get boring after a while. If you played it for too long, the games get repetitive, boring, and, you know, you want to play something else. Just want a little bit of change before coming back to it. So... It does have replayability though. You can come back to it at like any time and just hop straight back into it. It hasn't that had the like Fortnite effect where it's gone on for that long that so much has changed. It's hard to pick up again for new people uh, or returning players. But I still think it's good and I do think it's going to last for a, a good while, like a good few more years before it eventually meets its end like most games do. But... I still think it's pretty solid. I like it. 6 out of 10. Pretty basic. Music is fire. But it's a good party game. Party games don't need to be overly complicated, overly convoluted. But, yeah. A good 6 out of 10. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all next one. Have a nice day. And goodbye. Comment down below what you want me to review next. Alright, bye.